Hello everyone, welcome to the Mechanical Engineer. In this video, we are going to discuss the concept of parallelogram law of forces and we are going to solve two simple problems on that. So first of all, the parallelogram law is used to calculate the resultant force for any two forces acting on an object. So in this case, the two forces should be concurrent. It means that uh, the two forces should be acting from a point. So here I have considered two forces. Let us consider this as F1 and this as F2. And uh, if the F1 and F2 is acting with some magnitude, then there will be a resultant force that is acting at the center. So the resultant force is actually the equivalent force that combines both the effects of F1 and F2. Okay. So the resultant force is acting, I am assuming that the resultant force is acting at the center. So with the help of parallelogram law of forces, we can find out the resultant force. So with the parallelogram law of forces, the resultant FR can be calculated as it is root of F1 square plus F2 square plus 2 F1 F2 cos alpha. So here F1 is the first force, F2 is the second force and alpha is the inclination between two forces. Now to locate the inclination between F1 and uh, FR, I am marking it as theta. So the equation for theta is theta is equal to tan inverse of F2 sin alpha divided by F1 plus F2 cos alpha. So this is the equation for calculating the inclination between the F1 and resultant force. Now let us solve a problem on that. So determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. So here two forces are given. One is F1 that is 100 Newton and the another one is F2 150 Newton. So first I am going to mark the inclination between these two forces. So let us mark the inclination as alpha. So the overall inclination is 90 degrees. So alpha is equal to 90 degree minus. So between the horizontal axis and F1, it is 15. So I am subtracting it. Similarly, with the vertical axis, the F2 has an inclination of 10 degree. So the alpha is equal to 65 degree. Now let us find out the resultant force first. So we can write the equation FR is equal to root of F1 square plus F2 square plus 2 F1 F2 cos alpha. So let us substitute the values. It is root of F1 is 100. So 100 square plus 150 square plus 2 into 100 plus 150. I mean multiplied by 150 into cos 65. So if we solve this value, then we can get the resultant value. It is around 212.6 Newton. So this is actually the resultant value FR. So now to find out the inclination, we can use the equation theta is equal to tan inverse of F2 sin alpha divided by F1 plus F2 cos alpha. So now we can substitute this it is equal to tan inverse of F2 is 150. So it is 150 sin 65 divided by F1 is 100. So 100 plus 150 cos 65. So if we solve this, then we can get the data value as 39.7. So now I am going to mark this here. So I can assume that the FR is going to act like this. FR, the magnitude is 212.6 Newton and the inclination from the F1. So that is very important. It is not from the inclination from the horizontal axis. It is the inclination between F1 and FR that is 39.7 degree. So let us move into the second problem. This is again the same kind of problem. So here two forces are given. The F1 that is P is 40 Newton and F2 is 60 Newton. So the theta is given as 60 degree here. So I can directly, I mean the alpha, not theta, the alpha is given as 625 degree. 
So I'm directly calculating the F4 value. So F4 is equal to, so we can substitute it as 40 square, that is F1, then 60 square, then plus 2 into 40 into 60 into cos 25 degree. So if we solve this, then we can get the resultant value as 97.7 Newton. So this is the magnitude of the resultant force. Next, let us calculate the direction theta. I mean, yeah, theta. So theta is equal to, we know that it is tan inverse of F2 sin alpha. So here F2 is 60. So 60 sin alpha divided by F1 plus F2 is 60 cos alpha. So we can solve this and we can get a value of around 15.04 degree. So to mark this here, that will be acting here. So with the magnitude of F4 is equal to 97.7 degree and the inclination from the F1, it is 15.04 degree. So this is all about the parallelogram law of forces. So this law will be useful to find out the resultant for any two forces acting in a concurrent manner. Thank you.